got Johnny Jackson two days after the Mr. Olympia, three days after the Mr. Olympia. And he is hungry. And he's hungry. He is, you're just up all night shooting our new Madness commercial, shivering your ass off yeah, up, man. In, up in the mountains at a mine <laughs> in the middle of the night. But it was worth it. Yeah. I, I know one comment Gabe gave me was like, Johnny, have you ever seen anything like this? I was like, well, no, I never had a reason to be in a freaking compromise. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I've never seen anything like this. You just casually but, uh, visit mines yeah, on your yeah, free time. I know, right? But, no, it was so cool, man. Um, you know, it, it, it's I can't. It's amazing that to me that I'm getting to do the stuff that I'm doing with Mutant now. And um, this is one of the things that, uh, it's you know, to me it was over the top. Fun. No, I... And, and amazing uh, footage that's being uh, put out to uh, Mutant Nation. I, it's going to be, uh, I think it turned out perfect. You know, there was like three or four different plans and we kept having to change our plan. I feel like we had to move the date and then we had to change some casting and then we had to rewrite part of it. And then we had to, you know, like all this stuff like change. And then right. but the final way it turned out, I think is going to be perfect. Like oh, that's yeah. the best way we could have done it. Everything's for a reason, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and all the changes was for a reason because uh, the product is going to be awesome. Yeah. You know? So it'll be a good, it'll be a good spot. We're looking forward to it. But you need a, uh, have you ever had a and Never had a and in my life. So we're doing drive through emergency. <laughs> Part three. Not so much an emergency, but it is, you know, you want a burger, so that's well, an emergency. Well, it's definitely an emergency. I'm hungry. <laughs> so, he, he just, so I just got off the Olympia stage, and <laughs> then I got kidnapped, and next thing I know, I woke up in a copper mine. Yeah. And I had to shoot for, you know what I mean? 12 hours. 12 hours, you know, and shivering and cold and getting sprayed with water all night long and deadlifting and squatting and everything else we can think of but yeah. uh hey all for mutant nation oh no, i know and uh definitely worth it and uh but now johnny's got to get him something to eat yeah so we're gonna have a and w we thought we'd switch it up hang on right um and w's uh canadian joint right hey jonathan uh, a and w is canadian i think it is canadian yeah there's not a lot of them in the u.s but i won't hold that against the mouse no 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 i think we still do no, no, so no. still, still do a damn uh, good kidding. burger just kidding <laughs> Well, How's I actually that? got a story about this uh, when I competed in Prague. Oh, you know, right, right. Yeah, and um, I got a huge delay. I'm probably going to mess up the date. I think it was in 2010 when I went out there for the first time. Um, and Robert, the promoter, act actually picked me up, him and his right-hand man, Joseph. Um, I had a long delay in uh, London, and then finally got to Prague. It was like 2, almost 3 in the morning, something like that. You know, when you're in Prague, everything's pretty much, you know, black, closed. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah, that's yeah. it. You know, and I'm getting picked up by the promoter, so, and I, I'm like, starve, I have no food. I am, uh, seriously, I'm starving because uh, of the big layover, and I ate all my food and stuff like this. So, um, you know, they come to pick me up, and I'm like, I can't just eat anything in front of this guy. He's the promoter of the show, and he's all excited. I'm here. Oh, and you, looking what, you forward think me to compete. Such a guest you know posing, I mean? you got to eat Well, no, it was a guest pose competing at oh, Elvis competing. Prague. Oh, it was okay, the first okay, year. Okay. Oh, okay, So it was the pro show. Right, right. Actually, I'm competing. I'm so. dieting 20 weeks getting ready for this thing. <laughs> you know, they got had whiff of my reputation. They were all excited. Had set up a bunch of stuff, appearances, and stuff like that while I was there. You know, and... Um, and so I'm getting there and I'm starving. I don't have any food first. So I'm like, that's unprofessional, number one. I'm starving. That's <laughs> totally unprofessional, number two. You know what I mean? And uh, so I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm going to tell him, can he stop somewhere so I can get something to eat? And I'm going to compete like in a few days in this show. You know, what are they going to think? Uh, so, but um, hey, I was hungry. We got there. They end up being the nicest people that you can meet. Um, like I said, they was really gracious hosts. And uh, they asked me, was I hungry? And I was like, I'm starving. And I, I eat all my food, you know, because of the layover. And they understood because, you know, he had picked me up. Because yeah. everybody else that he had hired to pick up, whoever was coming in, was done. Right, so right. he took time out to come and pick me up his own time. So uh, he understood and said, well, there's only fast food, you know, that I can get. So 
he was like, we'll just get something close to your diet, you know, we'll get, um, like, some fish, you know, and it's fried fish, you know, yeah, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, and I guess because this fish is close to what I, I suppose to eat. Yeah, it's the same thing, right? Yeah, sure, but I'm like, it's fried, dude, but I'm not going to say nothing to him since they think that. I'm like, cool, yeah, that's a good idea, I didn't think about that, and so we stopped by, uh, I can't remember, because I think it was McDonald's, they don't have a lot of bad food restaurants right, there, right. you know, so I'm sure it was the McDonald's, and, uh, Got some, you know, a couple of fish, fried fish sandwiches, and I went to town back seat, boy. <laughs> Definitely. So, yeah, it, you never know. There's always, really is an emergency where you have to stop and get some fast food. Yeah, I, I had the same thing happen once. I, I had a delayed flight and then a canceled flight on my way to the North Americans. So I wound up getting into town. I got into Cleveland about... 11 o'clock at night, 11.30 at night, and I was supposed to get in at 1 oh, in the I'm not, afternoon. I don't mean to cut you off, but by the way, I got third. Sean, oh. uh, <laughs> uh, Dennis Wolf won the show, Sean Roden got second, and I got third. So it was, the fist sounds just didn't hurt me that bad. So. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, I'm That's sorry, funny. That, I, was I an that, that, that was an important point. That there. Yeah. So you could still get top three in a pro show on uh, Mc, uh, McFish. <laughs> Not Whatever really, they call but them. God, you know, in a prayer, <laughs> you know, I did on a prayer, definitely. Maybe you were a little flat and those sandwiches filled you right yeah, out. Maybe so, right? man. I was star like I said, I was starving, had been hours since I had, had eaten. So, yeah, I was definitely in a deficit, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But sorry, no, that, man. No, that's sorry funny. For, you know. No, I landed in Cleveland, and I was supposed to be in at, like, 1 in the afternoon, and we got there at 1130 at night. It was terrible. Right, wrong. And, right. um... I had uh, I had finished my meals and all my other meals were packed in my bag, frozen, and it was uh, it was a bit of a shit show. And uh, so I, I I landed and and I felt like I had lost too much weight that day. Like you know when you know you're losing weight Absolutely. right before a show, Absolutely. you know it's coming off really fast. And um, I've never ever come this way. I always go across the bridge. It's way faster. Yeah, yeah. Like two minutes. Actually, you shouldn't have gone if you if you just go. Straight down Mary Hill and don't go left on Broadway. You're here in like two minutes from here. Right. Oh, there we go. So uh, I pulled my scale out of my bag and I weighed myself right at the luggage carousel just to see. And I was like way too light, like 11 pounds where I should have wow. been. Because I, I thought I was pissing a lot on the plane. And I was trying to drink a lot. And I thought, man, I'm pissing a lot on this plane, right? And I was drinking a lot, pissing a lot. I was like, this was wrong. So I text Chad because I was working with Chad Nichols that year. Oh. And I told him my weight. And he's like, oh, shit. Okay, I want you to go to what, Wendy's or something and have two or three double cheeseburgers. Like, and oh, you need to crap. drink like a liter of Diet Coke and get. What's the Chad number? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and get hydrated. So I, I, I had a, I had a little bit of a fast food emergency, but it helped a lot, man. I looked way better after right, I absolutely, ate. Absolutely, yeah. I was just so depleted. Well, luckily, who who carries a scale in their freaking bag? So they told me to take luckily, it. Luckily, you had a. My God, because my weight was all over the, the place. Luck. My weight was so crazy. Bad guy, I was like, can I step on there <laughs> on the bag scale? <laughs> yeah, he told me to take it because my weight was so fucked up. It was wow. moving around on me. Here we are in Dub. I like in Dub. You haven't been here in a while. The good, good milkshakes. Oh yeah. Oh no, we can't do the milkshake. I'll take um, the, I guess uh, the six dollar. Maple Chipotle burger? The Papa Burger. Is that the Papa Burger? Yeah. Well, I'll take the Papa Burger. Then as a meal, medium. With fries and root beer? Sure. Anything else? Um, yeah, I'll take um, the three strip chubby chicken. Honey mess is okay? Yeah, that'll work. Any fries and drink? Nope, just that. 16 dollars right. I'll, I'll also get... Uh, I'm gonna get a, a Papa Burger as well, but just plain, just cheese on it. My cheese? Yeah, just cheese, nothing else. I like my burgers plain. Yeah, what's Anything on else? that anyway? I don't know. What Sorry? That, what's on That's that? everything? Uh, no, I'll get that as a meal, uh, medium with uh, Coke Zero or Diet Coke. Okay. And then I'll also get, um, I'll get a chubby chicken burger just plain. Because the front is about to get heavy. Oh, see, this doesn't happen when I eat by myself. Hello. 30. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Thank you.
Oh, so there's actually like a strategy. And then I like being that guy that parks and pigs out in his car. Oh. And everyone drives by and they know what you're doing. Yeah, I never do this. <laughs> you never see me in my car. <laughs> oh, you, your, your truck is too nice uh, to eat it? Well, well, absolutely. For one, and then, yeah, I can't, no way. My baby, I love my baby, and she doesn't even eat in my car. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we got? Fries. Check. They got good fries. Do they? They're hot. So, uh, Ron, do you want to go first? Like, what you want yeah. to want? Um, my reasons are simple. That looks good. Everything else is Johnny's. Sweet. That's some ketchups. Yeah, so I got... I got a, a plain double cheeseburger. I don't like anything on my burgers. Some of you guys might know that. I like the taste of meat. And I have enough vegetables at home on my own time. So when I'm out, I'm having something that I don't want vegetables. So. Did you give me any salt? Yeah, there's a, there's a, a oh, dip I there. Oh, you got to put a ketchup on a burger too? Yeah, I, I, I like to do it. I like to do it myself. Oh. I, I'm a control freak. Oh, you asked him for it plain. Just yeah, yeah, I'm a control freak. I like to be in control of the ketchup distribution. I like to uh, decide exactly how and, and where the ketchup will land. I had to try these chubby chickens with uh, Victor was bag bragging about it back there, so I'll check it out. <laughs> the chubby chicken. Yeah, give me the rundown, Johnny. What did you get and why did you get it? Um, well, I got a Papa Burger. I guess they're just, that's their big burger. Um, double burger, and cheese, and uh, fries, of course, and then uh, chicken strips. So uh, Chubby chicken. They got a good chicken strip. To be honest, I got it because I'm freaking starving, and it's the best thing that I on the menu that really looked appetizing to me so um, you'll never know until you try so here we go mm. well, you wish me you were me huh <laughs> and it's very good yeah and is pretty good they use pretty good quality meat and they don't use any they were like the first fast food joint in Canada to stop using all trans fats and stuff like that oh wow so they were a little bit ahead of the curve for a while. But you can taste how, if I can say clean, you're it is. And as far as clean, you're a horrible influence on me. <laughs> Thank you. I try my best. Well, but yeah. I'm serious. You really can taste the difference. Like in something like this in the McDonald's. I never eat McDonald's. Chicken strip or a Burger King or a Wendy's. You can really taste the difference in the meat. I it's never, really I, like. I can't eat. It's McDonald's nice anymore, man. It's really nice. Yeah, this stuff is really. It's been a long bad. time. I did a fast food emergency with Trevor Coot, and we went to McDonald's, and that was the first time I'd had it in like over ten years. Yeah, I used to love that crap. So, how many cheeseburgers do you think are in your traps? <laughs> Who knows? Don't you know? Um, actually, double quarter pounds with cheese, not cheeseburgers. You know, too many. A lot of double quarter pounders. Yeah, man, a lot of them. A lot of what good double quarter pounders went mm -hmm. into those traps. What um, what do you eat the day before? Do you do anything with your diet the day before powerlifting meat? Do you just shovel in calories? Do you make a conscious effort to eat like in a normal amount, or is it? No, just eat. Just eat normal. You know, there's no, you don't want to overstuff yourself, you mm -hmm. know, because if you put in too many calories, then your body only can process it so fast. So then when you're lifting, you don't want your body to be processing food while you're trying to exert energy and lifting the, the heaviest you can in your life, you know, at that period in your life. So that totally isn't smart, you know, to overstuff yourself that night and then get up and eat that morning your body's still trying to process food. You're just zapping energy from yourself. 
I know yeah. if I pig out really hard, I'll feel like shit the next day, so. Absolutely, because you know. your body's still trying to process, more than likely, the food in your stomach. Wait, are you going to do any more powerlifting? Are you going to do another meet? Yeah, man, I want to. You have a lot of fun. In my head, I always say I will. Right. Um, physically, we'll see. You know, um, just have to have time. As you can see, I'm really busy year um, competing. Well, you only did six shows in the last 11 months. <laughs> competing and dieting. So, you know, that's a whole nother monster in the powerlifting game. And you have to be totally focused on that, just like you you have to be totally focused on the bodybuilding. Or you, you can really majorly hurt yourself and end your career, both careers. So... Uh, you know, I have to have like an, enough time to where I know there's nothing going to distract me and I can uh, totally focus on, you know, building my body and my strength again to be able to do that. How, how much does your strength change? Like you said, you, you told me once you only deadlift when you're getting ready for a powerlifting mm -hmm. competition. So let's say you haven't deadlifted for what, eight months or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you go back to deadlifting. I mean, how much does your strength change in the first two months of deadlifting again? Can you tuck in your neck this time? Oh. Huh. You know what I mean? Like, do you have, like, does 600 feel heavy the first day, and then a couple weeks later oh, you're back yeah. up? To, well, yeah, well, my warm-up feels heavy. Right. You know, 225 feels heavy again and <laughs> awkward, you know, because it's such a huge movement. Yeah. And, and you use your whole body, so... Your whole body has to get in condition to be able to do that movement. You know, it's not something that you go in and just hammer after it, you know? Um, or I wouldn't think you sh <laughs> you'd be smart enough not to. But yeah, absolutely, man. It's like anything else, like, you know, when we compete and uh, finish the show and then we take a week off or two and get back in the gym and everything seemed like, wow, I was able to lift that? Yeah, you know? I think, yeah, I mean, kind of, yeah. it, and it's, it's still like awkward and, yeah. Same exact thing. You just you have a different goal. Mm -hmm. What's your best your best deadlift again? Eight thirty thirty two. Eight thirty two. Uh huh. Now I remember I had an interesting car ride with you one time uh, at LA Fit. Yep. This guy hopped in with us and he knew you from Texas, and he said, "Hey, I saw you pull in Corpus Christi when you pulled eight thirty two." Uh huh. And you said, "Yeah, I had to do it twice." Didn't you let go of it too soon once? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You're right. So you pulled 832, but you let go of it before it hit the ground. Right. I, like, let it drop. You let it instead drop. Instead of, yeah, putting it back. So you had to do it again. Right. And so, yeah. That's really rare to do it twice, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Not, like, not exactly the plan. Yeah. And he said... And it was to, easier the second time. He said to you, I couldn't believe you pulled it again. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and you said, yeah, because you only have so many 800-pound deadlifts. Uh -huh. And I used up two of them that day. Oh really? You know what I, I mean, said like, that? yeah, you were like talking about how you know, you didn't ex you didn't mean to have to do it twice. You, <laughs> you accidentally let go on the first one. Like well, the thinking. whole yeah, but the whole thing was was I didn't mean to do it twice because I wanted to go up. Right. You know, I lost it on my uh, my uh, second attempt, so I still had a third attempt. So instead of raising the weight on my third attempt, I stayed there. Me and um, Josh. Uh, Bryant, who was my trainer at the time, we decided to stay there because you'd rather walk away with that weight than walk away with my opener. Right. Would have been oh, a little bit like 771 was my opener. So it was like, you, do you want to leave, walk away with 832 or walk away with 771? What would so, you have gone to? Oh, 900. Oh, 902. Really? Yeah, that really? 900 was the goal that day. Absolutely. That's what we trained for Absolutely, and it was just a hiccup, and never had a chance to get back on it and see if I could do it. Man, you know, because that was it, because of the slip up, you know, with my my second pool. So, and you you tore your hamstring deadlifting once too, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I did that. Was, that was eight hundred uh, plus as well. Yeah, oh, it was always eight hundred at least. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, but um, yeah, man, I remember that. Oh God, and Ed Cone was there. Matter of fact, at the meet, and he was—he spotted me when I did my bench. When I did a 600 bench that day, and Ed Coon was spotted me, so that was awesome. Right. And then, uh, yeah, I did. Uh, it was uh, what was I doing? I think it was just 820. I think it was 826, something like that. And I, uh, it got stuck. I just got stuck in one spot and couldn't just. Only thing I had to do was just 
stand up or just well my technique wasn't as uh good as it is now and you know my biomechanics and i didn't realize only thing i had to do was push my hips forward not try to lift the weight up so yeah. i was trying to lift the weight all the way up so i could straighten up and only thing i had to do was push my hip forward and i would have been erect you know mm. so not knowing that and trying to pull 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 and stood there for so long struggling with it my hamstring went something has to go with that much weight, <laughs> yeah, poor, full pulling and, you know, pushing, you know, something had to win, you know, and gravity won that day. Yeah. Man. Okay. Thanks for the little powerlifting seminar, Johnny. Hey. You know. It's always a pleasure. You got so many good stories about that shit. Yeah, but thank you for the A&W. Yeah, I've never yeah, been no here worries. before. This is but awesome. It's on the company. And the conversation. Yeah, well. I don't get this you know, every day. I don't like to ask you the same questions over and over again and change it up. There's been drive through emergency, pretty casual emergency, but you get the idea. <laughs> Episode number three, A&W Burgers, having a good time. Big Ron, Johnny Jackson. This is good.